Okay, back. So, you probably got the gist. We're playing some blue red thopters. Gotta, gotta see if one of the original tribals uh, is still that great. Uh, of course, if we're gonna run elves, we have to also run uh, thopters, right? Jeez, guys, making fun of my attempts to stream. That that was a very sad, sad, uh, sad moment in my life, and you guys seem to seem to be making light of light of it, and just hurting my hurting my feelings. That's not very nice of you. I'm gonna shake it off now. Try to be awesome at magic. Ah, uh, the hand is slow. The hand is interesting. I'm gonna try to do better. Yeah, that's pretty. That can be better. We have to draw some land, but I think it's doable. Bring the pain. Raging Goblin, how you doing? Bow mats and everything. So this is my very aggressive burnish thoptery type thing. I like going the more aggro plan than the long plan. Dirtling is a good way to get yourself in trouble these days. Um, I think it's gotta be the scrounger. Scrounger is more aggressive. On the draw, it might be the fire weaver because we can't be sure uh, that scrounger would strike, but on the play, it's the scrounger. I tried three alternatives to OBS, and I disliked them all. And none of them really fixed the audio issue very well. But the core did seem to be some kind of way that OBS was talking to my computer, for those interested in such things. Alright, so Binding Mummy has taken the field. Send in the scrounger. No blocks. Shocking. All right, damage, damage, damage. Let's go, Fire Weaver. Hopefully we draw that land. We can get the Engineer, and then it'll be like everything has double haste. Lord of the Accursed, our opponent's got a good curve too. They have legit things going on. The question is, how hard are they gonna try to beat me up? Are they going to attack me, or do I get to do all the attacking? Okay. They, they have decided they are going to take some damage. Okay, so I think engineers for sure. The one thing I'm wondering is, do if I attack with this Bowmat after playing engineer, he'll definitely block it. So there's no reason to attack with it yet. All right. I, a bluff attack would have been interesting because it's like how bad do you think he needs this Lord of the Accursed? If he needs it very badly, he may feel unable to block. So you're in there, you're in there, and I guess you should be in there. I mean, that he'll, that's the block he'll take, but at least this way, if for any reason he wanted to trade with the Scrounger, he takes an extra damage. Could also trade my Bowmat for damage, but I don't think that's the play yet. Not right now. All right, here we go. Got him at 10. We have a Firecraft, we have a Ballista. We have a Reckless Fire Weaver, so we've got reach. We also have five creatures to my opponents too. They are behind the eight ball. A little bit of vigilance. What else can you do with this, with the zombies from here? I don't think there's anything that can gain a ton of life. Dark Salvation is probably the best thing that could happen. Instead, it's a Liliana's Elite with no creatures in the graveyard. Pretty happy to see that. Yeah, and I don't think my opponent would put me on a build to smash, even though 
Maybe this is the deck for it. Maybe this Thopter deck should have built to smash now that I think about it. Maybe this is just a better deck for it than the red deck. But, nah, I'd rather play Shock. I'd rather play Burn. Yeah, speak of the Red Devil. Okay, attacks. Block, block, block. Take two. Not quite dead. On the other hand, Ballista. Go to nine. And attack. Attack, attack, attack. Block, block, and block. Go to eight. Seven, six, five. Four, three. Seems good. And I get to hold shock up, I suppose. And then we untap and win if he doesn't gain two life. Which is different from one. He can gain one with a wayward servant and another zombie. Alright, here we go. Geronimo! Say Geronimo, say Geronimo, say Geronimo, say Geronimo. Can you feel the beat down? Bombs away. Oh my. Um... One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. I have to remember to fling this. <laughs> that was close. And we are at three. Yep. Three. <sighs> I think I just hold the burn. What could happen? In Oketra's name? What's that do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's not good enough. Oketra's name isn't good enough. Double in Oketra's name is. How about uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, plus 5. Uh, Fleet Wheel Cruiser is not good enough. Liliana's Mastery is not good enough. So I think I'll just hold and go to the face. Mm -hmm. I mean, my opponent had a good zombie curve. We did two drop, three drop Lord, four drop zombie, five drop mastery. I mean, that's, that's what you do but it will not be good enough for my opponent this time. Uh, Oketra's mercy would be sad. <laughs> Thankfully, not this format. Down to one. Let's see what rank we're dealing with here. Oh, they conceded. Okay. I was thinking gold gift, but they conceded. All right, cool. So we got on the board without playing our amazing four drops, which are Pia Kira Nalar, Whirler Rogue, and Thopter Spy Network. Those are kind of the crux of the deck, but didn't need it that game. We got there. The Scrap Heap Scrounger getting so many hits in, I think, was the big difference. If our opponent had traded with the Scrounger early, maybe put a Binding Mummy in front of it, I think that whole game would have gone a lot differently. And that'll be something to keep in mind when we're playing from the other side of an aggro matchup. Probably to trade early and often. You'd be amazed how often I forget that, though. I forgot it once yesterday. All right, maybe we get the elf matchup. I will keep this. Whether we draw a red land or a blue land, it turns on our hand, and yeah. We should also be able to peel a two drop like a champ. 
Hopefully we have the elf matchup for the battle, the battle of the tribal originals. Magic origins, two tribes, elves versus thopters. Shock is not the card I wanted to draw. I know, man. What's up with these halvesies? People who, like, decide to put their deck somewhere in between 100 and 60. I, I'm sure it has to do with it's all the green and white cards they own or something of that nature. They're at exactly 75, so maybe they're, you know, maybe they're pre-sideboarded. Maybe they pre-sideboarded the matchup. That's what we're not thinking of. <laughs> in fact, maybe that's a format that should be explored. 75 card decks for duels. People want sideboards? Just play 75 cards. You have sideboards. Congratulations. Two shocks off the top. I don't know if those will be good. But let's find out. <laughs> like, hey kids, you want sideboards? Go ahead. Nobody's stopping you from playing 75 cards. Nobody. Think of it. About half the time, you'll draw it in the you'll draw the card you want in the matchup you want. Probably, right? Is that how it works? Is that math? Just kidding. <laughs> I know better. All right, our opponents get in the visionary train. Let's see if they draw all four visionaries out of that seventy-five card pile. All right, excellent. Um, I don't think there's anything an opponent can do other than fog me. But that is what we wanted when we wanted it. Not a lot of uses for energy in the deck. We have uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger, and we have Aether Hub to get it back with, but that's it. And don't, so I usually won't be very shy about gaining life, because that's not going to come up too often. But Spy Network, baby. We get to play the Thopter value game. Everybody's favorite. Everybody's favorite. It doesn't get old, does it? Just that Spy Network cranking out them dorks. Eight points of burn, opponent at 15. Eight points of burn, and all of a sudden, this stupid Xbox app starts listening to me and recording what I say. Stop listening, Xbox. Corona. I don't even know your name. Corona. Ka Katana. Kasana. Kavana. Blah, 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 blah. Just stop listening. Yeah. Yeah. Go away. Nighthawk wants the Rec... Katana. Okay. Uh, Nighthawk wants the Rex Sage Displacer lock against me. I sort of want to see that too. I'm not going to lie. Opponent absolutely in the tank. And Gideon! Oh my! Of course. See, you still draw Gideon and play it on curve out of your 75 card deck? Straight to Emblem, probably the right call, but too far to go and gonna hang back and block I don't know I don't know what the right call is in that situation it's a tough one I'd have to know their hand I know if you think Gideon's gonna die sometimes an emblem sounds good but if you can't stop the beating you're gonna take in the air did you really do anything all right let's get him I don't want to use the shocks, I don't think. If my opponent wants to trade for the apprentice, I'll just be happy about that. Shocks are for the dome. Nighthawk's calling stream sniped. Is it? Jet Pilot 50. Do we have a Jet Pilot 50? Mods. Inspect. Paging Jet Pilot 50. Tragic arrogance, you say? 
Hmm. Well, I get to keep an artifact. Ooh. Okay, so check it out. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Your arrogance made me discard two cards, homie. But I get to keep my creature, my artifact, and my enchantment. There you go. <laughs> yeah, shock for the win. Oh, why would you attack? There's no reason to attack here. Yep, there you go. Oh, the shock value. Get it? All right. Um, hmm. So it takes one, two, three, four, and dies. Perfect. I like it. <laughs> that's a that's a lethal peel. I think. Unless I'm doing my math wrong. And it doesn't matter what he blocks. So we can fire this off now if he blocks the Bomat courier. And oh yeah, he can stay at one. Because I am one creature short. But I'll get the Bomat card. So, cycle the Bomat Courier. Yay. Worth it. <laughs> okay. Alright. Let's see if they have another Arrogance. Although that wouldn't even do it. Oh wait, yeah it would. Creeping Mold. The tech has a way to deal with my Thopter Spy Net. Or my Harvester. The problem right now is there are too many options. Even the Westvale Abbey is a huge threat. And the concession. Jet Pilot hath fallen. Green, white, I guess mid-range? 75 card stack? Not, not gonna stand up. To the Thopters this time. Not this time. He even had Tragic Arrogance and Creeping Mold. So it had more interaction with some of our hard to interact with stuff than some decks do. But I think people misunderstand. I think people underestimate the speed. This deck comes at you fast. We haven't even played a Chief of the Foundry. Or a Pia and Kirin Nalar or a Whirler Rogue. I think people underestimate the those Thopters and the damage they deal. I know I did. I know I didn't even like Thopters when I saw the tribe. I was like, this is no goblins. You're right. It's flying goblins with haste that get pumped. I know I've played this person before. I know they're a viewer. I've seen them in I've seen the I've seen this person in Twitch chat. Oh, this hand. I need to draw some in between, but I can't really turn it away. Would you consider replacing Bomat Courier with Built to Smash? Not today. I've watched. I've been. I've got Bomat Courier Envy from all the times it got used at the Pro Tour, watching coverage yesterday. But maybe you would. Maybe someday it would happen. Still, I think Bomat Courier is a big reason to play Built to Smash because you want to keep attacking with your Courier, and they want to block it really bad. So it's almost like a taunting elf. Like they'll. They'll they'll just they just jump in front of the courier, so you really want both, don't you? I think you do. Alright, blue white something. Get him afraid of sensor. Bang bang. So let's get some ideas for Duffman. What would you remove from this deck for Built to Smash if you wanted to play that card? Get some ideas. Go ahead and float some float some thoughts. All right, so are we playing against like Bant Flash or what? Hmm. If I throw this in there, it's very likely to die. If I play something pre-main, Spell Queller might come down. 
I mean, do I just want this to die? It's not like I'm really going to use it anytime soon, but it has cards under it. So if we play the grind game, I guess I'll... Uh, if I attack with it, my opponent will probably play a Spell Queller if they have it. But if I attack with it and they have a um, Bounding Crassus, it's very feels bad. So what do you play around? Everything? <laughs> Maybe we just play around everything. All right, let's see what happens if we go to combat. Mm, all right, let's see what they do. Actually, if they play a Crassus here and I get to resolve my Harvester, I'm not upset. Okay. Spell Queller. Okay, so this way the Queller does not get uh, to snag a, a spell, which is excellent. I'd much rather it just snagged a Bomat Courier than one of one of the cards in my hand, because I've got a pretty good hand. The deck does attack a lot, though, Hawk. Oh, that's a pain. Ugh! Now we have to peel a shock. Very much. Please, peel a shock. Ugh, it's playing good old Gemini Bant is what we're up against. That's not a shock. In fact, haste is just about useless, but P and LR will make them deal with that. And if we get to untap with it, then we have shocks. We're going to take a punch for it. Frickin' Thalia. Where are my shocks at? Mm. Takes out a token, I bet. Nope. Takes out Pia. Okay. Things are going to get real. Got seven power. And I don't want to get into a blocking fest with this deck. Not at all. Now, the question is, do they have uh, essence, whatever, the thing that blinks, the reflector mage? I think I have to chance that they don't. Let's see. Let's find out. I mean, if they've got it all, they got it all. Harvester races are good. So this will come out tapped, and this will come out tapped. But now we're threatening Ormondal. And a lot of damage that's going to be hard to stop. We just have to turn this race. Oh, what I give for shock. I bet there are three shocks exiled over here. But we'll never know, will we? Not unless we get milled. And we've got an even wind guide. That's kind of funky coming out of that deck. But it's a card that you are allowed to play. Let's just put it that way. And they he's trying to ratchet up the pressure. I Ugh, okay, so make this not block and then what do we get into? We go one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Is that better or worse than? I guess it's. I guess it's just better to hold back on that. We could also uh, not give up any thopters, make this unblockable, and get him for five. And then we have a nine-point attack if my opponent swings all in. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Plus, we have two blockers if things go wrong. All right. Well, or no, one blocker if things go wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Yep. Let's do it. Gain that life. I'm thinking there might be something funky. Oops, nope, not what I meant. Let's, let's, I'll talk after I get my targeting right. 
But I'm thinking something might be funky with my opponent's deck. Some kind of a token, anointed procession, blink thing. I don't... But I don't know what to make of it. That even wind guide is just... Seems pretty left field. <laughs> Nighthawk. <laughs> Maybe Monument. Yeah, yeah, this looks like it could be a Bant Monument deck. Um, Nighthawk has a suggestion that I should just um, Ormondal and then time, time stall him out if they have the nerve to have an answer. <laughs> well, obviously that's a pro play. <laughs> obviously that's the pro play. <laughs> But yeah, I think I think you guys nailed it. I think we're looking at a a, a monument band, and our opponent really thinking about this block. And gonna take the beats. And now, Pia Kieran Nalar. And we'll see what they can do. And it would be great to draw a chief of the foundry. A land, uh, Ormondal doesn't enter the battlefield, so uh, an untapped land would let me flip Ormondal. That would be pretty good. I could make it unblockable with the Whirler Rogue as well. So, big turn. Opponent got the good start. They, they had the Spell Queller, the Thalia, hit the Reflector Mage, but... They're up against it right now. Aethersphere Harvester did a ton of work, or we'd just be dead here. So let's let's remember to thank our Life Lincoln boy, Aethersphere Harvester, for letting us be in this game. Card is a freaking house. Tamio, Tamio's the call. Um, what does Tamio do here? Tamio would lock down Harvester and probably I don't know, the Whirler Rogue, maybe. Or I guess you'd want to lock down an artifact to prevent unblockable from the Whirler Rogue. Is that good enough? I don't think so. I've also got the, the Pia damage. So then, if he locks down that and that, I attack. I get him for 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe I can get him for 5, and I have 1 activation. So then, I can't win. Hmm. Opponent is running the clock. What's going to happen? Has opponent been called away by real life? I hope not. They had, this is somebody who's been a viewer. I've seen them in our chat before. I think you guys would remember this person. So, I hope they didn't have to leave. I hope they're also not sitting there typing me a long uh, message. Because that's another way to lose your turn. That people have done before. Like, hey, thanks for your YouTube videos. Hey, play the game, then thank me. Because I want it to be a good game. Oh, and and in the final hour, we deploy a tireless tracker. Do we have attacks? No. So, opponents going D. That does not enter the battlefield untapped, but, but it can if I kill Thalia. What else can happen? I can play you. We can make. Uh, the flyer is unable to block by sacrificing two artifacts. Then we attack to, or one, two, three, four, five, six. That's not good enough. We can shoot Thalia, then play Aether Hub, then play Thopter Engineer. Seems like a good turn. I don't know how my opponent beats it the way through that. And we can also make, say, Harvester unblockable and get him for three. Or we can save it as a blocker. So what's the thing I definitely don't want to block with is Whirler Rogue. So, okay. So, Whirler Rogue, unblockable. Tap those. Attack. Just got to whittle that life a little lower. Okay, Pia, Hilthalia, hopefully. Hopefully we don't get blown out by uh, some trick, but play the land, get it untapped. 
and I will play... I think you are better as a surprise, and I have two of this, so I will play this. Okay. Gotta beat me this turn. It's gotta beat me this turn or have fog ready. Ronus. Ronus can't do anything right now. That's that's a tragedy. Yeah, Ronus in a token deck, I am I am baffled. I if it is a monument deck, we've seen two green creatures in a row. Those don't really benefit from monument. Tracker I kind of get. I mean, who can turn down the value, right? And opponent, are we get are we doing stall tactics? Or maybe we're typing that message. They haven't played a land, so I mean, I can't just assume this is over. I can't think of something for white or blue that would break this up. I guess select for inspection could get me. I've just got to get three damage in. So maybe using unblockable is bad, and I'm just supposed to attack with all my thopters. That gets it, that gets it in through select for inspection. Yeah, so we're just going to hit them in the air. So, I, yeah, they're dead. Um... I don't get the impression they need gold, but maybe they do. I don't know. And the timer's just getting run to the ground. We could unblockable Ormondal into select for inspection. I don't like that. And there's a shock. Um, all right. So yeah, it's over. They're probably going to time out the blocks too, if they already timed out this. So what's going to happen, we're going to attack, even if they select for inspection on this, we can sacrifice two artifacts, takes him to three, he can block two, and he takes three. So, we has won the game, so we will concede, because I don't... I don't need any more timeout salt. I really don't. And if maybe they need the gold. So we'll make sure they have the gold. But since we can't lose, we'll take the win. Three O, three O on the Thopta list. Bringing it, bringing it like it ain't been brought since like 2015. This hand will do. We don't have blue, but we only have six blue cards in the deck, so it's not its not for sure that we need to have it to win. Do I run Sahili? I do not. The, the sleeves pump fake it. They make people just freak out and kill my Whirler Rogues before I copy them. Obvious strategy. Come on. That, that's pro tip. <laughs> And a Sylvan Advocate, you. So much power and toughness, I fears it. We hates it. Let's copter. We'll want a blue mana now for this. 
Or we might just discard it if we get to copter. But our opponent's getting green. What else they got? More green, maybe? Gonna have themselves a think about what to do. Maybe a wreck sage for the blowout. Green elves. Oh no, it's double advocate. Okay, we know what happens next, right? We know explosive vegetation is the next play. There's just no question. What are we even talking about here? We know it's veggie time. All right. Um, so the question here is, do we play PNLR or Chief of the Foundry? Both add the same amount of power and toughness to the board, but one keeps a blocker back. Not that I want to block here. So I think, hmm. But we don't have haste either, and this sort of has haste if we have a bunch of creatures out. But this is good as a surprise, like screw up your blocks. So I think it's the chief right now. Although those things with vigilance, that's gonna be rough. Copter, copter, give me the news. Draw me a card that I can use. Mm, off. <laughs> not not a card I can currently use, but one of the good things about Copter, when you get a little color shorted, you can pitch those cards. Oh no, no, no explosive vegetation. We get a, we get a second shot at life and no playables. So our opponent is on all Sylvan Advocates plan. Ooh. Okay. Well, it's Pia and Kirin Nalar for sure. And then the Artificer might really help out in a turn here. I'm definitely not... Ah! Concession? I accept. <laughs> I'm scared of them advocates. But nah, I, I trust them. They're just like, I can't handle Copter Chief. Pia Nalar. Pia Kirin Nalar. It's too much. Scoops. Scoopsies. And that is how you bully someone out of a game. Four wins, no losses, going for the undefeated mark in Thopterville. Hmm. Can't keep you. Can't keep you. A little better, a little better. Mana screwed playing any monocolor deck is, is sort of rough, right? Hmm. Alright. Let's start with Apprentice. It's always a tough thing there, Apprentice or Bomat. But I think Apprentice when I see white mana, because we may need to get in front of a Consul's Lieutenant. Servant. All right, zombies. This, okay. Wayward Servant is a card that the last zombie deck, although they had a great curve, they did not have Wayward Servant. And that card can get, that card is pretty twisted in the matchup. No joke. It makes racing really hard. But you also can't count on blocking zombies. So we've already got a choice right here. Do I? Hmm. I guess if I hold back and they play Lord of the Accursed, we have a block and they don't get a three point attack. And we can try to play a value game with the network. So I actually think I'm going to D up. I'm just going to D up this game. Uh, we're at 4 0. This is looking for the 5-0, but we're up against the Zombo tribe, so tribal wars. 
And I'm going to play a role I haven't played all day. I'm going to try to play a defensive posture. And I'm glad I did, because that Doom Dissenter just shut down the ground. Not very advisable for me to attack into that card. I will play this because Thalia could be a thing. And we'll play this so I can get in the air next turn and draw a card. Should that be the play. And uh, yeah, this is going to get interesting. Our opponent will probably try to go tall if they can get Liliana's Mastery and Lord of the Accursed. And we need to try to get Airborne. Okay, never mind. They're going wide. <laughs> they have Anointed Procession ready to roll. Holy cow. And now they get double tokens if that Dissenter dies. So we have to keep that in mind. Um, so let's get the network online. Let's bring the network online. This has to be a, a big part of our game plan is getting damage through in the air and getting ahead on cards. In before stir the sands, uh, mastery is what I'm afraid of. I mean, uh, how about mastery into stir the sands or from under the floorboards into stir the sands? That's what I made a deck like this. We played a deck like this. Yeah, Shard, we're, we're chilling on the four O's. So yeah, we played a deck just like this. Oh, Anointer Priest. Okay, okay. We're going for a lot of life gain. That could be a problem. And attacks. Time to reflect? Well, if he has that card, I just want him to play it. Go ahead. In Oketra's name. Okay. Fine. I wouldn't have blocked any other way anyhow. I don't want the Bomat Courier to go away. Because it will get Chief pumped and I can probably do better things with it in the near future. Okay, this turn. We have options. Uh, Chief and Apprentice is an option. Artificer and Apprentice is an option. Artificer, Fumarole. Basically our whole hand is an option. What's the good option? I like playing the Chief and getting in there while I can for damage with Bomat, Pia. Like right now he doesn't have good blocks because he attacked with the Doom Dissenter. So I think what I like this turn is Chief, Apprentice for defense, and Tap Land. I think I still want to hang on to this in case Lord of the Accursed arrives. So that's the way we're going to do it. We'll hold these off as our opponent uses information to make blocks, but it shouldn't change much. Plus, we might draw a card from our network that changes what we do. I don't know what would. Maybe a shock would entice me, killing the servant. Card off the top. Not a bad one. All right, so we'll stick to the plan. Play another Apprentice and our tap land. We are getting wider fast and faster than the deck with Anointed Procession, but they only need one big token generator to catch up. And they have the Anointer Priest to gain a bunch of life from that token generator and the Wayward Servant to drain me. So this could be a, this could be a big turn. If they've got a big something... Oh, Lord of the Accursed. Okay, I'm very happy to see that instead of a token generator into a Lord of the Accursed. Is Ma the Maverick Thopterist in here? The answer is no. It's actually pretty hard to play it any earlier than you'd play a Whirler Rogue or a Pia Nalar. A Pia and Kieran Nalar. Uh, the attacks again, huh? I mean, this time it's not in Oketra's name. This time it's time to reflect is the card. So I'm going to take the damage. But yeah, I tried Maverick Thopterist in this, and it just, it was really hard to cast it early, and then to make a lot of, out of it. Basically, if you're going to run Maverick Thopterist, you shouldn't be running, like, Inventor's Apprentice. You should be running Implement of Combustion or Servo Schematic, and those just aren't that good of cards. Not good enough, that's for sure. All right, 
Let's actually think. Our opponent's at 16. Our attacks... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Reclusive can take that out. But I don't think we can get the opponent dead. I mean, maybe we could draw... What if we drew into shock? What if I made... Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I can give myself a draw to shock for lethal if I sacrifice this Thopter to make the Anointer Priest unable to block, but I don't like that idea. I think we need to leave back some defense because we're on 13 and our opponent has the ability to drain us with the Servant. Maybe the Servant is what has to die. Maybe that's how I... Uh, but that then I can't attack the way I want to. But maybe that is right. Yeah, I think that actually is right. Yeah, the Servant's the target. Because if my opponent gets to do those big token things, that's what'll buy them time. And now, because we don't have to attack him on the ground, we can attack him in the air. And I guess I can attack with the two threes? If the opponent wants to kill one, then they also take two damage. Now nah, I don't want to trade one for two damage. Attack with Bomat, and I could plus it if they block. That's pretty sick. So we'll do that. Oh, there's time to reflect. Yeah, that's right. But if we draw a time to reflect, I'll be a happy guy. So he goes there. I go like this. He plays time to reflect. But then it's out of his hand. Yeah, that's fine. Not gonna need the Bomat cards. Doubt I'll even wheel it at any point. So it's just trading my 1-1 one, one, and 2 of my mana that I wasn't gonna use otherwise for that turn. So I think that's good. Arrogant Rabbit in the hizzle. What up, dude? Okay, our opponent hit that land drop. Do they have Liliana's Mastery? Do they have from under the, under the floorboards? Nothing. Well, that's not cool. I mean, it, not complaining, but for them, it's pretty rough. That's a pretty good draw. Opponent takes one, two, three, four in the air. On the ground, they can block one, two, three, so four, eight. I'm sure that there's lethal in here somewhere. Um, so I think I'll take the road most likely to find it. Okay, unblockable to something with some power. There we go. Can't block this turn. Back you. Walking Ballista for one. Make something else unblockable. You. Actually, if I use the man to make both of those unable to block, that would have been smarter. So I kind of punted. Yeah, if I had used two mana, sacrificed the two summoning six thopters, they don't block, they don't block, then I win. Ugh, silly. Yep, sharp, sharp. Making things well wasn't nearly as good. Another time to reflect. Okay. Down to two. I gave my opponent one more turn by one life point that I didn't have to give. Uh, I should know better using PNLR. I've had much, much better... Uh, I've I've had good success using PNLR in weird situations. I did some in the tournament. I had a game that I remember I won because I used PNLR very well with a lot of mana, but this was not one of those moments. I screwed the pooch. 
Sorry, everybody. <laughs> but fortunately, it looks like we will not be punished. <laughs> Nighthawk would like to point out that the opponent did not make a single token in this game. Are you suggesting they need more token generators? <laughs> I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Yep, I get a punt for that. That's that's the truth. That is an earned one for show. Sure. 